Good evening. Welcome to the June Southern Pride DNN User Group meeting. We have an exciting meeting ahead of us with uh, not only uh, folks online to speak and give presentation material, but we also have in-house with us uh, Mitch Sellers this evening. Thank you, Mitch, for joining us, uh, local. Mitch, Mitch walked all the way here, and it took quite a long time. No, wait, he didn't walk. He flew in on one of two planes. All right. Well, um, uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us online and for joining us uh, in person for uh, not only the meeting tonight, but any of you who are following on uh, the recording afterwards. Uh, let's, uh, let's just jump into it. Um, tonight, as I mentioned, we have two folks. Uh, we're going to finish the evening with uh, Mitch Sellers talking a lot uh, about the information that was uh, very exciting and, and presented and discussed recently. Uh, there's going to be some echoes from things you might have run across at uh, DNN Connect. Uh, so, uh, you know, Mitch will be talking that the headline of, of his uh, setup is Dawn of a New Day for the DNN Community. And if we keep saying that we're excited about things coming ahead and things that are forward, uh, we keep getting more and more excited. And there are new things to make us excited all the time. And, uh, and so we have a good, good discussion here ahead for that. Uh, we also have um, Daniel coming in to talk about some of our beloved older DNN modules, those core DNN modules that needed to get updated and ported, and they are in progress because of his efforts. So we're going to uh, jump into those and uh, hear about that uh, first off. But uh, before we begin, let's uh, let's do a little bit of uh, community news and information. I uh, pass that back over to Clint to talk about. I've got a couple of screens up that I'm going to um, bring on screen, but we've got things like uh, the new DNN Partners pages. We've got some new information out there. So, uh, Clint, what do, we, what do we have on the community side? Yeah, so, so there's a lot going on on the community side. As you mentioned, the, the partner program, which after DNN Connect, we had a lot of European interests. So new signups? That's right, yeah, and it's still going on. So if you are not listed in the partner directory and you do any type of DNN work, you should definitely submit because there are no fees anymore to be in the partner program. Um, so the last I checked, we were up to 54. Uh, now, you won't see 54 listed here because some people are still working behind the scenes, and I've got their page disabled until they tell me they're ready. Um, but, yeah, so we've got a lot of activity there, and that is good to see. Most people uh, are giving positive feedback on the new partner program. And mm -hmm. you giving out trophies now, or, or <laughs> we have trophies. Yeah, so, so the trophies, trophies and oh. shields. The trophies was a, a recommendation from David and others uh, that they felt like. So when you look at uh, a partner listing, if you scroll down, like you'll see the where it says registered or standard. Yep. It used to have stars there, and they said, "Oh, that feels like a rating." So let's what change it. Stars? So we changed it, and uh, it's just another indication of the program being, you know, a work in progress and, 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 and built by the community. So I was going to say it's, a, it's an indication of making recommendations and seeing those changes happen yeah. shorter than a year of, of taking time. So it's right, fantastic. Yeah. So we're definitely li listening. Um, so we've had a lot of activity in the partner program, and um, we are, you wouldn't know this from the website, you only know by tuning in to this meeting here, uh, but we are about to uh, launch the new and updated uh, DNN MVP program, or should I say relaunch the what? DNN MVP program on uh, July 1st, so there will be news coming out about that, so just, uh, yeah, if you go to that page, you won't see anything different yet, you right. can wait on the blog. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and another thing is, like, people are posting a lot of blogs in the community blog section. So, like, if you want to know, kind of like, if, if you want to stay on the loop, you should check that page if you're not in one of the ecosystem advisory groups, right? Um, so, a lot, a lot of good info there. Uh, we do, we did make an announcement at DNN Connect about DNN Summit, which will be uh, in, what is it, February? Maybe February. Valentine's Day. Uh, in Denver again, uh, so you, you, yeah, so you won't find info on that online, uh, not yet, but it is happening, uh, so, yeah, if you are, you know, interested in going back to Denver or to DNN Summit, um, that is when it will be. And, and volunteers we, are greatly appreciated. Yeah, volunteers are great. Look, we've already had two new volunteers, which is good. We need more because you know the work is great and the workers are 
disputes. Right. <laughs> unpaid? Um, oh, no, it's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is an important detail. Uh, yeah. So um, I think, yeah, uh, well, one small update that you may not have noticed in the Dean and Digest uh, that went out, they found the, the online version. Um, you'll see where we're starting to kind of put the focus on community members, right? People like Daniel who are, you know, really making things and get doing things, right? So we're trying, trying to highlight that. Um, and other than that, yeah, there's a lot of progress going in the DNA tag group. I won't steal Mitch's thunder there. Yep. There's a lot of good stuff uh, happening. Is that, is that my I'm going to shut it off. Yeah, put it on. Yeah, right. Will Stroll over here interrupting our meeting from California. Um, well, you should be online. Yeah, he should. So, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's just going on. We're going to make some updates to the DNN forums uh, shortly. That is like right. archiving. Some I've of seen a lot stuff. of conversation about that, about yeah. whether we move things and archive them or leave them intact so that older crawled links yeah. stay up to date. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of conversation going around that. and. I kind of maybe stealing the end of your sentence, but if you care about it, weigh in, and um, that's the location to, to weigh in on that. Right. Yes, no. So you, you hit the nail on the head, and uh, hopefully we'll get it cleaned up soon. And uh, no, I mean it's it's exciting times. I mean there's a lot going on. And if you're considering making an argument against WordPress versus DNN. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, I do have to I, mention that blog. Uh, um, it's happened since the last meetup, so go um, check you know, that one out. I, community blog. I didn't bring that one up, but I should bring that up very quickly here. Where is that? Yeah. Um, if you write a good blog, it gets translated into Spanish. If you there you go. <laughs> oh yeah, one other thing we should actually mention is that DNA Connect yeah. put a lot of uh, resources into having video replays. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're oh, yeah. um, so, uh, sorry, bringing it back in um, and organizing this a little bit. The blog post that we're talking about uh, was one that David put out here uh, just after the last DNN uh, user group meeting. Uh, that user group meeting finished with Clint and Dustin and I heading out to the local pizza place and sitting down and talking. And we've often talked about differences between different CMS systems, WordPress being obviously one of them. And the problems we have with WordPress and the people who select it and use it and live by it and the things they don't think about. And that's where the conversation went that night. And David, you know, lowered the, the boom on, on some surprising security holes, vulnerability, not vulnerabilities, surprisingly... Uh, Features. Yeah, uh, surprisingly <laughs> blatant data that's just shared out there um, in an easy-to-access manner uh, in every WordPress instance, uh, for the most part. And... Uh, so we talked about that, and David took that and turned it into an excellent blog post that talks about it, talks about the reasoning and ideas behind it. And like Clint was saying, uh, you know, the sign of doing an excellent um, blog post in the community section is that you get it translated into uh, Spanish by Francisco. So that is uh, pretty fantastic, and if you haven't caught the English or Spanish version of that, you should definitely go check it out. Uh, I immediately took that blog post, commented on it, and then took the uh, link to that and sent it out to all my uh, WordMess uh, loving friends. This, this part. Um, okay, so um, we're going to talk a little bit more about DNA Connect uh, in a few minutes uh, because I do have some links of, to those videos and to those presentations, so it's important to mention uh, that they are out there. Uh, but, uh, David, why don't you go ahead and switch to presenter um, if we move on to our, our first speaker uh, to really uh, talk about the modules, the updates, and the love for some of these things that um, we all have been using for a very long time, and uh, getting those updated and modern is a labor of love. And um, here we go. Uh, Daniel is online. Can you hear us well, Daniel? Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, take it away. Let's, uh, let's hear about this and learn more about you. Awesome. So I've been uh, starting to try to revive the old uh, community modules. I'm specifically talking about the modules that uh, came with DNN in older versions. So uh, a, a little about me for those who don't know me. Uh, my name is Daniel Valadas. I started uh, as a freelance developer uh, even before .NET. My first programming language was actually basic. And I now learned uh, C, C++, and I moved on to Visual uh, Studio with um, um, uh, Visual Basic, 
And in um, 2006, I started using DNN version 4. And uh, I was building websites for customers. Uh, I have all, I've always built custom skins on each site. I've never purchased any skin. So I started more of a, as of a designer. And then I learned uh, C Sharp, and I started making uh, custom modules. In 2009, I started hosting, uh, it's not a big operation, but I started hosting websites for local, small, medium businesses. And I decided to dedicate myself to DNN. I've tried other content management systems, um, good and bad. And DNN was on a technology stack I was comfortable with, and it had all the features I ever needed. So I decided it was best to focus on one thing than to have 10 different things to learn, and I decided to focus on DNN. In 2010, I quit my day job, and I was focusing totally on uh, uh, website customers. So I was hosting about 20 customers, as well as providing uh, support, upgrades, redesigns, uh, making custom modules. A lot of the custom modules I make are very, very specific to one need. And you don't see me selling more, much modules, but I still build a lot of modules. Uh, I also worked on integrating uh, parts of the website with internal systems, uh, so more of a back office thing, and a lot of translations. My clientele is mainly uh, French speaking here, and uh, there's a lot of French and bilingual English French websites, so localization is very important for me. It was one of the main reasons I chose to dedicate to DNN, because that was important in DNN. Uh, and I've been doing freelance work to complement the small customer base. And in freelance, I get more enterprise level customers, more on a um, one time thing, you know, as a consultant. And uh, currently, in the past uh, month slash year, uh, I've been doing a lot of upgrades and taking old websites and making them responsive. So that's something that's really growing lately. Uh, very quickly, my business uh, with what relates to DNN, I do a little bit of hosting, a little bit of new websites. That's decreasing. I have much more older customers than new ones. And uh, what I do more is module development, very custom, and uh, making websites responsive, and doing upgrades. That's something that's growing exponentially in the last months. Everybody wants to upgrade. It's really increasing in my revenue stream, this category. The usual upgrade scenario is, uh, has always been, uh, you know, most people want to upgrade when you talk to them about it. And there's always some people who, who don't want to for various reasons. And the majority of those, uh, the biggest chunk, they upgrade without any major issues. There's a medium portion that's going to run into small issues that we work out and we still do an upgrade and a small portion that will run into some major issue that prevents them from upgrading. More recently, if I just go back a couple months, uh, that's changing. And uh, people still want to upgrade, but now the biggest chunk of people experience some upgrade issues and a small portion go with no issues and just do the upgrade perfect. Uh, which leaves us with a medium chunk that experience major issues that, that prevents them from upgrading. And I don't know if you guys can correlate to that, but in my experience, that's what I'm seeing recently. So if we compare those two graphs... Yeah, uh, that, we're kind of discussing that around the table here about um, you know, how much that's our experience or if we're, we're matching that or we're close to it. Uh, very, very interesting. Okay. So... What I see from my clientele is about a 20% increase in the amount of people that actually want to upgrade. And I think that's caused by uh, people being more uh, concerned with security and privacy than before. Uh, there's been a lot of things in the news with massive data breaches, uh, Facebook in the Congress, you know, and they're getting a hundred of GDPR emails uh, from all kinds of companies. So they're more aware, they're more focused on the importance of upgrades. Plus, they, when they built their website a couple years ago, being responsive was a nice thing, but today it's the top priority. So any way they need to change something in their website. And those two reasons together makes it so that the person that takes the decision can uh, more easily uh, lock on a budget from their boss to invest in an upgrade. So it's a growing category, I think, for me and probably other people too. 
Another thing to note by comparing them is that uh, before, the majority of people were upgrading without issues, and that's now the smallest line of the tree. So very few people upgrade flawlessly. flawlessly. They're small or big issues. Uh, and that's not caused by the platform. The platform, uh, in my experience, upgrades very good most of the time. There's very few issues. It's mostly modules that don't react well to breaking changes. And the two main reasons for that is the changes with the Telerik assembly and uh, the, the removal of uh, you know more than 500 a deprecated APIs in the NN92. So a lot of people have very old modules. And that's the main cause of these issues. Uh, which brings us to retention. Uh, as Andy mentioned, uh, there's a focus on retention right now, which I totally agree. And by forcing, not forcing, but by suggesting people to upgrade, we put them in a situation that now brings them into problems. And that's a scary trend. It was before, in my experience, around 5%, and now it's 25%. That's like five times more, 500% increase. So we're putting people in a situation that makes puts them in, in the mindset to go check other solutions. And I think that's scary. I think that needs attention quickly. A uh, quick glimpse at DNN history for those who are not with us for a long time. Um, what you see on top is um, kind of important events for DNN. And on the bottom, you have the Google Trends graph for uh, .NET Nuke and DNN keywords in blue. And in green, you have the same thing for CMS or content management systems. It kind of shows us the relative popularity of DNN on the average compared to content management systems. So DNN started in 2001 with uh, iBuySpy, which quickly became DNN. Uh, actually, it became .NET Nuke. It was a rebrand to go with DNN uh, more recently. And in DNN3, uh, they decided to take the core modules, modules that were already part, some of them, since iBuySpy. Uh, of course, there, there, there was additions. But they took those modules and they separated it, them from the, the, the main code base to have separate projects for the modules. I think what happened was the code base was very big and it was starting to get a lot of work to maintain all that in one thing. And they gave those modules to community members to maintain. So one person was assigned per module and you are the maintainer. And that correlates in the graph here with the boom in DNN popularity there was a lot of action, a lot of community involvement uh, maintaining those modules, I think. Probably other stuff, but I think the modules are a big part of that. In 2006, uh, DNN Corp came in. So now it was no longer just a community project, but it was also community um, commercial products. And since then, I think everybody agrees the, the, the frictions started a little bit there and uh, have been going on for multiple years. And we see that both content management systems and DNN were dropping in popularity, but DNN was dropping a little bit more rapidly than the average uh, since then. So we lost a lot of community members, developers, uh, because of some frictions, which I'm not going to go into details. And in DNN 6, another important decision regarding the modules was taken. Uh, from DNN 3 to DNN 5, to the latest release of DNN 5, the modules developed separately were still merged into the distribution of DNN. So they were still part of the, the, what people download and install. And updates were also done that way. It would replace the installed modules. Uh, in DNN 6, they decided to stop doing that and to no longer distribute the modules with the main package. I think the reasoning behind that was that the modules were lagging behind what the core was doing, and uh, it was blocking new releases because the modules were not ready. I think that was the reasoning. And um, after that, we have the more recent history, uh, DNN 789, uh, DNN transition to GitHub, and I think that was a good thing. Uh, people could help better submit pull requests. Another important event for the community modules was that uh, closed, CodePlex closed uh, somewhere in 2016, um, and most of the modules were hosted there. Uh, those who had active maintainers were moved into GitHub, but some of them were pretty much abandoned there. So 
there's a little bit of abandonware there. And very, very recently, ESW acquired DNN, and we are now in 2018. So I think from this graph that when Andy said that the time is now, uh, the time was actually a couple of years back, like in 2011, to take care of those problems. But we are now in 2018, so the time now is now. Um, in those years, there was a couple frustrations that we as developers encountered. Uh, there was frictions with DNN Corp, which I'm not going to go into details. Uh, there was a lot of features that were removed. So first, the modules were removed. And I think for a business customer, that's value. If you get one system where you can have your blog, you can have your forums, you can have you know pretty much everything you need is there, that has value. It's still available, but it's not easy to, to know that it, that it is available. So people who are with DNN for a long time, they know about those modules, but a new person will never know that they are there unless they do a lot of research. Uh, not only the modules, but also the, the administration UI with the persona bar, some important features were removed. Uh, one of them is localization. It might not be important for everybody. It, it's not removed, but it's unusable. There's a couple comments on it, and uh, I'm one of the persons who needs that on a regular basis. Not only me, because I can work around it, use the old localization, or go directly in the files, but a user that buys a module and wants to localize it could do it easily, roughly easily but now it's totally unusable. Um, having icons on pages was removed. That's another use case that uh, I have a couple customers that use either in Mega Menu or they don't want to invest in an e-commerce module because they don't really sell online, but they still want to have product pages and have a DDR menu that shows you know, a grid of all the products with images. So that's a, something that was removed. I don't know the reason, and I don't know the reason not to bring it back, because it would be a very simple fix. There's everything to do it is there. It still works. There's just no UI to actually upload the icon. Uh, analytics is the last example I have here. Uh, I know there's advanced analytics in the commercial products, but the basic, easy-to-do way to just put your Google Analytics there and it works, that's gone. You have to resort to injecting the JavaScript or use a third-party module. So it's not user-friendly. And that's another very, very small feature to bring back that to that was there. Uh, there's a lot of community. Well, there's three community pages that were gone. Uh, I don't know if there's projects on the way for community pages, but community voice uh, disappeared. That was a good place. You could suggest ideas. Uh, people could vote on them. And eventually, developers could pull the most popular ideas from there and implement them. So I think that was good for community for showing people that uh, you know DNN is listening to you. Uh, that's gone. Uh, the leaderboard, when uh, DNN was redesigned, the, the website, the DNN software website, there was a very popular thing which was gamification where you would have points for being active in the forum, in the blog, uh, posting a poll request, a lot of things awarded points, and you were ranked on those points. So that was a good motivation for people to get involved. And although the page still exists, I think I'm number nine on there, uh, it's no longer in the menus. So if you don't know about it, you're never going to end up on that page. And obviously, the forge was removed. Uh, everything is redirected now to the DNN store. Uh, that's where all the community modules were in the past. Plus, anybody could submit a free module to be available for DNN users there. Um, Ignored issues. There's a, in the DNN issue tracker that, that now it's moving to GitHub, but before it was a DNN issue tracker, uh, there, there was a lot, a lot of reports of bugs and new features that were removed and things like this that simply got closed with a one fix resolution and no comments. That's really frustrating to be ignored, uh, I think. Uh, there's a steep learning curve with the new technology stack. Um, back then, if you knew web forms, you, you were OK. And then uh, you know you could know a little bit of MV, um, MVC and uh, web API and stuff like this, and a little JavaScript. You're good. You can do pretty much everything. Now, if you want to do anything that relates to the persona bar, you need to know Node.js, Knockout, Babel, ESLint, React, Redux, Webpack, Plus, you have to get information on the new DNN uh, uh, React components. 
and there isn't a lot of documentation, of good documentation on the subject and walkthroughs and module examples uh, out there. So it's a little bit hard to take that uh, steep learning curve. And then if you manage to do all that, you run into some build process issues. I know there's work very recently that's being done on that, and uh, we're probably going to have a solution soon, I guess. But right now, if you go and clone the DNN project and try to build it, uh, you can't. There's other pieces to the puzzle. You need the persona bar uh, project. You need uh, the, the, the libraries. And there's a lot of stuff that you need to put together. There's really no instructions on how those pieces of the puzzle should go together for you to just build, do your fix, and submit a, a clean pull request. And I find that it's sometimes a little bit hard to communicate to know who to contact to get help on those subjects. Uh, uh, it's getting better by the day, uh, but I think we can do maybe a little better. And then if you walk through all that and you spend a lot of time and you finally manage to do something good you can contribute, and you submit your pull request and it gets ignored for a year. That's also very frustrating, you know. So the chances that you're going to do that again are very slim. So I, I know there's been work recently. A lot of pull requests got merged in. Uh, we're, it's, it, we're going in the right direction. I think we just need to work a little bit more on the other items. Uh, one thing that was done that was very good, I think, is the ecosystem advisory groups. Um, there's four of them, one for technology, developers, partners, and awareness. And uh, I know that uh, the technology advisory group is doing an awesome work. They're meeting weekly. Uh, there's a lot of progress going on. Uh, congratulations to you guys. Uh, however, uh, if I just go to the DNN software website, uh, if I haven't been following the blog, uh, I don't know about these groups. I don't know who can I contact in these groups. So I think maybe we should make some group home pages, which would have some information about the groups, who to contact, you know, maybe accept comments, uh, something along those lines. Uh, regular meetings, I, I know they're happening. I don't know if they're happening in all the groups, uh, but uh, I know the technology advisory group is doing great. As for the developers, if I, I am going to join them and fire up meetings, I am not sure exactly how it's going now, so that's something I would like to check. If not, I would just start my own meetings and talk about the community modules. So that's something to discuss. Uh, I don't know how good are the communication between the groups, but if we uh, start having more regular meetings with the developers group or a new group just for the community modules, I would like to see happening uh, maybe not weekly, but you know monthly or every three months or something to get all the groups together to have a chat and exchange information. And uh, I think it would be nice to have public agendas for the, the next meeting so people can uh, submit comments before that meeting happens. Um, we can pull good ideas from those comments. So let's focus more on what I was here to talk about, which is the community modules. So what I've been doing lately in the past weeks, uh, the announcements modules is now compatible with DNN 9.2. Uh, the documents module, which is actually the first one I touched, it was a request in one of the technology advisory groups, a request for help to make that uh, DNN 9.2 compatible. So I thought that was something I could handle, and I saw an open here to uh, bring back the subject of the community module. So uh, I fixed that, and it's currently hosted on uh, Mitchell Sellers' repository. I just almost finished the form and list module. There was three pull requests that I merged. Uh, one of them was mine to add reCAPTCHA support. So it's an option. You don't have to use it. You can use the plain old ugly DNN one. But if you decide to use it, you just need to enter your public and private keys, and you have a reCAPTCHA instead of uh, the standard uh, DNN CAPTCHA. Uh, there was 12 issues, which I went through. I reduced that to four. Uh, fixed all, a couple bugs, and uh, of the four that are left, uh, three of them are actually improvements, so there's only one bug. I'd like to resolve that one before publishing uh, this release and uh, keep the other ones for an next iteration. Uh, I also moved the documentation from uh, CodePlex to uh, GitHub. I had to convert everything to Markdown. I run a quick read and remove the stuff that was obviously wrong, but it still needs work to make that documentation uh, better. A couple of issues I've encountered while doing that, it took 
quite some time to get the right access to the repositories. It's now resolved. I understand with the uh, ESW uh, acquisition uh, passwords and all these things uh, could take some time to find the right people. Uh, in the meantime, it didn't block me. I asked uh, pretty much every two days uh, Ernst Peter Taminga to do stuff for me because he has right access. And I want to say a big thanks because uh, without him, uh, I wouldn't be at that point. I would have just started like two days ago instead. Uh, another thing I encountered, there were a lot of very old pull requests. And people have been working on the code and merging their own stuff without merging those pull requests. So that makes it hard to merge after the code has changed a lot. So I think we should focus on bringing the pull requests close to zero before uh, modifying the code. You know, It makes it easier to merge stuff. Um, and most modules needed their build process to be updated. Uh, some of them came directly from CodePlex. Uh, they were part of the core when they, the last version was released, so the build was just not working. Uh, what I've done, uh, everything is restored from NuGet packages. And you can basically just install Visual Studio, even the free version, uh, clone the repository, and build. Everything's going to get pulled. You don't even need that NetNook to be there. You're going to need it to test, obviously, but you can still build on a vanilla Visual Studio installation. In the couple next weeks, what's on my plate, I'm working on the links module to bring it compatible with the NN92. Uh, there's one pull request to merge, and there's 14 open issues. I need to go through these. Some of them probably just need to be closed because uh, it's a false uh, positive or cannot reproduce or just a comment that was resolved in the comments. Uh, the rest of them are going to tag them either as bugs or enhancements or a uh, new feature. And we'll focus on the bugs and push the new features for a next release. The gallery module is another one I want to attack shortly. Uh, it's not the best module. It's very old. There's much better available today. Uh, I just want to this module to not block people from upgrading if they were using it and have a lot of content, which is the case for two of my customers. So I'm tackling this one soon to scratch my own itch. Um, so I need to move it from CodePlex. Uh, I need probably to rewrite it in C Sharp or converting using a tool, uh, update the build process, and I would like to have at least one basic responsive template for that module. Another one I'm going to work on shortly is the repository module. There was a comment in the forums asking if uh, it was still being maintained, so I'd like to answer yes to that. Uh, it's going to have to be rewritten or converted to C-sharp and tested for the NN92 compatibility, well, for a couple versions of the NN compatibility, actually. Uh, but it's a model that's much bigger than I thought initially, so I kind of pushed it a little bit to work on smaller ones, but it's in progress. Uh, when this is done, all the modules that are hosted on the DNN community repository will be DNN 9.2 compatible. Uh, in the medium term plan, what I would like uh, to happen, to make happen, would be to have regular meetings discussing the community modules. So I don't know if that would be uh, merged with the developers group or if we form another group just for that subject. That's something to discuss and decide. Uh, I'd like to bring all the modules that were formerly included with DNN, that, that came with the distribution, under one uh, roof. Uh, would that be DNN community or a separate one more specific just for these ones is something else we need to discuss. Um, there's a page in the wiki that is a DNN suggested upgrade path. Uh, it basically tells you which version to install for your best chances of a successful upgrade. That supposes, uh, assumes that you have never used any of the modules that came with the, the platform. And I would like to change that. I would like to include uh, the scenario where people were using all of those modules and to list when you, know, when you get to the NN8, you need to upgrade this module to that version, so on and so forth, and maybe a, compatibility list between the modules and the DNN versions right there. So people doing upgrades have all the information they need for that. And then obviously go through all of the modules that are there and uh, focus on fixing the bugs first without adding any features. That could be pushed to a second uh, iteration. Obviously, update documentation. There's a lot of those modules that had a help link in the module uh, menu. 
and that um, for most of them points to a page that no longer exists. So I'd like to move the documentation to the DNN wiki of each of them and point the help link there. And obviously there's going to be documentation updates to do on that too. And when all that is done and everything is uh, pretty much bug free and DNN 9.2 compatible, we can start implementing the feature requests that are present and maybe modernizing those modules to, to the new technology available to us. And I think that could be a nice place to have tutorials and walkthroughs and training for developers with, with hands-on examples on a real module that's working that's useful. Um, and obviously after that, I hope we have enough people uh, that are dedicated to keep maintaining that regularly. Right now it's a mountain because there's a lot of old stuff, but when everything is clean, I think it should be easy job to just keep on maintaining them. And the last point would be to talk about these. For someone new to DNN that comes uh, to the platform, uh, to actually know the existence of those modules, you know, that are free, open source, and community maintained. And that's a request I get a lot from, from the enterprise world. They want to have the source code of whatever you put on their website. And uh, I think that's a good solution for those customers. So in the first meeting uh, that I would like to hold, uh, there's a couple subjects we need to, to, to address. First, legal. Uh, we need to clarify the naming convention for those modules. They were community modules. They were core modules. They became community modules. Then they move on to the forge, and they were forge modules. In the forge, people could submit modules there. So there's other modules that are called forge modules that are totally unrelated to these ones. And uh, right now, it's the DNN community um, organization that has those modules, plus other ones that were recently developed. So I think we should find a way to isolate these ones. I don't know how. That's something we should uh, discuss. Also, uh, there's some uh, Hey, issues. Daniel, um, the second you brought this slide on screen, everyone started talking about the CLA and, uh, and different points of this. There was an explosion of conversation the minute that slide came up. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so there's some copyright uh, issues I saw in the modules. Uh, some of them have copyrights from whatever company the maintainer was working for. So the copyright is not DNN. Uh, I think that should be uh, clarified, you know, what was the deal with that? And uh, do we need to change the copyright to DNN? What happens? Uh, do we have a, a standard license template, you know, that's validated by a, a ESW lawyer or something along those lines, so we need to have that discussion. And do we need a CLA a contributor license agreement for the community modules? I know it exists on the, 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 the main project. Um, they are actually talking about it in the DNN uh, Technology Advisor Group this very week. And so whatever comes out from that discussion, if it needs to trickle down to the community modules, uh, we need a communication path to uh, make that happen. And also, how are we going to manage that? So how do we keep track of who signed it, who didn't sign it? Uh, uh, that's a discussion and something we need to document or to, to implement someplace. We also need to discuss who does what. At the start, there was one person responsible for one module, I think. Uh, now maybe there's one person responsible for two, three modules, or do we all work together on all the modules, or a mix of that? So I don't want to step on anyone's foot uh, while uh, doing this. So if there's uh, official maintainers, uh, we would need to document that somewhere to know who to contact on what. Um, we need to decide on a release process. Do we? follow the main project, which requires two approvers from a short list of selected approvers. Uh, how do we approve merging a pull request? How do we decide, OK, it's ready for a release? What are we going to do for testing? I think if we go too complicated on that, we might have problems actually putting releases, because I'm not sure how much people are going to be interested in joining the effort of taking care of the community modules. If we go too easy, we might have bad releases. So that's something we need to, to discuss and address. And also, I'm going to need some help from someone. So it's going to be a call for help. The uh, Active Directory module, I do not have the knowledge to tackle that. I'm not familiar with Active Directory. I don't have uh, what it needs to actually test that. 
Uh, I have virtual machines. I can offer uh, equipment. I can offer time, but I don't have the knowledge. So I need either help or someone to take care of that one. Uh, we need to discuss regarding the forums versus active forums module. Uh, DNN had his own forums module, and at some point they acquired active modules, which included active forums. I think from memory that there was a way to upgrade one to the other, to migrate. Uh, if that's the case, we need documentation on it. Uh, active forums, I have to check where it's hosted, uh, who takes care of that, if anybody takes care of that. And we have to check also legal issues on that. Uh, what was the deal of that acquisition? Uh, what are we going to do for license for uh, copyright on that? Uh, which brings us to uh, either the same meeting or a next one. But uh, additional stuff we need to do. Uh, I would like to bring all the modules that were formerly uh, included with DNN under the same roof. Uh, four of these modules are currently maintained, I think, quite regularly but on a different repository, which is the blog, documents, media, and store. Uh, I would like to discuss with these people if we can bring that under the same roof as the other modules. And if so, they will need to maintain their right access. I don't know on GitHub how granular the permissions are, if we can just assign them right permission on, on that repository that they had, or if they're going to have right access on the whole thing, uh, for good or bad, I don't know. Maybe they're interested in tackling other modules, too. We'll see. And uh, finally, to move the rest of the modules, the abandoned ones on CodePlex, to move them to GitHub. Uh, they're small modules, but it's a little bit of a complicated process to move them over uh, successfully with the documentation and everything. There's a lot of conversion that we need to do to C Sharp. Uh, and some of them have a source code without even a solution or a project file. So there's a little, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than it looks like. And finally, I had a slide for comments or questions. I leave it up to you if you want to do this now or if you want to push that to the end of the meeting. Um, Daniel, uh, we're going to kind of organize some of the, the conversation and questions because we have a, a small flurry of them. To but, first. but first, we have one first. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, is that a very first or what? Uh, not, we've never given a sure. standing ovation in a Southern Pride meeting. I don't think so. Uh, that is that is one this damn door. that is one damn fine amount of research, work, effort, repeated efforts to follow up. There's a drive that you have within you that is making. Amazing things come to fruition, and uh, that absolutely deserves a standing applause. Um, right, thank you very much. We're very impressed. Um, I have so many questions that we were trying because your organization was so well presented and then moving. We tried to hold our questions instead of jumping in like we often do. But um, let, let me organize a few of these, and then we'll bring it to the larger group and do some other roundtable. Um, but. Um, I want to start by, by reiterating a point that you made that I, I like a lot, and it's the purpose of what you were doing isn't just to upgrade some older modules so there's slightly newer versions of them. The yeah. main purpose is to help barriers to DNN version upgrade to, to sites that are older that, yes, those companies, those sites could switch to use some other newer module to do something better or different, but that's not the purpose. They first have to get themselves upgraded, and if they are hindered by an older mm -hmm. version of the forum module, or if they're hindered by an older version of the gallery, the gallery module is what made me think of it. You said the purpose here is that there's certainly other gallery modules out there that do a great job, but that you want to make sure that somebody who wants to do an upgrade doesn't have to also think about replacing the gallery module when they do the upgrade. They can upgrade their existing older version and then make choices so that it, it takes away that, um, that hurdle and that uh, bar. I completely totally got problem. my point because I have two customers who are in that situation where they have yeah. a, a huge uh, quantity of data in that old module. It's ugly. I, it's, it's an old module. <laughs> There's much right. better available. But they, they have to invest a lot of time to bring that into another modern module. That I agree. There. And that time is most of the time that they would have to spend to convert their website to another solution. 
and uh, that makes them think. We're, we're putting yeah. them in the situation to go check the, the let's call it, quote the unquote, the competition. Sure. Um, I, I also that. was going to dra uh, draw in some of the other modules because a few slides in where you were talking about what you were working on and what you were working on next, immediately coming to mind, I had four or five other modules that I thought, well, wait, he didn't mention this, he didn't mention this, he didn't mention this, uh, David mentioned that he did, that you didn't have the iframe module in there, but then within well, a slide well, or two. Because we've already, okay. We've uh, already, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But then within a slide or two, you really brought in many of the other modules that I was going to ask about. Um, I was going to ask about the, the forum or the active forums uh, module and situation. I was going to ask you about a few others, and you really covered the bases there. So before moving on to some other questions, let me ask the larger group here. Um, you know, we, we've seen a list of modules here. Does anybody see any other modules that aren't mentioned? Or, or I have to have any other I actually have the full list in an Excel spreadsheet. Yep, I'm, I'm looking at it. You know, the map I'm module. At it. I'm still sharing. Okay. That All the ancient. modules that came with DNN are here. Yeah. And I've marked uh, if they are on the DNN GitHub, on the DNN community GitHub, yeah. or if they are in another repository. I have the link to that. So I would like to bring everything to have this yeah. column full green. And uh, the number of issues of pull requests, the number of downloads, so we can sort them by popularity if you want to focus yep. on the more popular ones first. And Excellent. if they are working with the NN9 or not. Yeah, he talked and about that. That that was like a month ago, so there's, there, there's been change. Uh, the links module is now the NN9 compatible. Anyway, I need to update that, but I'm keeping track of all of that. Yeah, so I, I guess, you know, a couple of things, just since you have this list up, that, that I think would be would be really good. Um, first of all, um, documents module, feel free, grab it from my <laughs> repository and put it in the community one. Um, it was only placed in my repository uh, due to the fact that we had no organization and I had to fix something. So um, whatever we need to do to get that moved over. Um, this information, though, I, I think would be a fantastic example of a community involvement blog, something to get out on the DNN community blog I so agree. people could see where these exist and and get some, you know, SEO love, if you will, for the concept of somebody looking for the repository module for 9.2. Yeah, where it's you located know. and what to do and is there a plan for it. And, and, yeah. and talk about that. So I, I would I would encourage you um, you know, or, or if we need to try to find somebody else in the technology group to, to help you do that. But I, I think to try to get some of this information out there on the blog under your name to showcase your efforts to the community and so that everybody in the community can see what, what you've gone through, what's there, what's working, what's not working because of how important it is for upgrades. Um, yeah. Mitch, that's probably a good segue too uh, that you were you were saying a, a few moments ago that you wanted to talk a little bit about the technology advisory group and these modules. Um, yeah. So right now, you know, there's there's a couple of things, and I'll, I'll lump my other one of my other ones into this at the same time. The the technology advisory group right now and all of the things that we're doing, which we'll talk about more here in in a, in, in a little bit. Um, we're focusing right now primarily in that group on DNN platform itself. Um, some of the things, some of the processes, the procedures that we're putting in place may or may not make sense. Um, and it may make sense to try to either work you into our technology advisory group meetings in terms of a, a, a way for you to be able to, to rally support from the community. The other thing is I think that um, although it, it, it doesn't necessarily look like, you know, you organizing your own meetings is, is a good thing, um, I, I would actually argue that it is the best thing. Um, organizing a subgroup of, you know, interested parties for community events is, is, is really it, right? You're, you're the community module guy and you've done a lot of effort and I think we need to try to find a way to rally people with you. Um, we've done with the existing well, MVP program. Was part of the question though, where do the modules live? Where, what, what advisory group do they fall into? So technically they fall into multiple, yeah. and, and that's the, the, the bit of the problem, right? The, the advisory groups that were formed 
um, were formed around DNN platform being the focal hub and those groups breaking off pieces and parts of mm -hmm. DNN platform. What, we're, what you're talking about here is <laughs> important, yet it is a, a subsection of the bigger thing. So I think that focusing on organizing a group of people that are interested in this and then leveraging that group to provide status updates or requests, and this would be the big thing, I think, with the interaction. If you need something from the technology group, so for example, yes. getting some of the GitHub stuff squared away, making sure that we have the right GitHub access for you or for anybody else that wants to contribute, that I think would be a great thing to go into the technology group. You also mentioned in your, in your slide decks, you know, do we need the CLA agreements on the community model? Yeah. Yep. At, at this point in time, I believe the, the answer right now is no. Um, the CLA agreement as it is, is there on DNN platform because of some indemnification clauses that are part of the Evoke product line is actually the reason why we have to have the CLAs. So, okay. so. I, I would say right now from a community module perspective, we don't need it. Um, Understood. And you're, talking, you're talking about organizing subgroups. Sebastian's kind of doing that with the GDPR. Exactly. Right. We already, so we already have this subgroup concept going with GDPR. That effort was initiated at uh, DNA Connect yeah. uh, with Sebastian Leopold working on a group to try to figure out what we need to do for GDPR. I think the modules here are just like that, just longer term scope. Yeah. Right? Sebastian's group for GDPR is going to be short lived. Right? It's going to be get hopefully. GDPR implemented, get the features, they become part it. of the core, and then that group kind of devol dissolves and moves <clears> on to the next one. This community group, I think, would be a, a lot longer. But then you may want to reach out to the advisory group and get Will and his group to help you with promotion. Yeah. So and the advisory and, and, and uh, suggestions. And it, it, yep. Exactly. So I think that that's where we need to find that right relationship for these to work in, and I will, I'll be the first to admit, right, as the leader of the technology group, that we have been so busy on all of the other things. Yeah, that great work. We don't have, bandwidth. we have not had bandwidth yeah. to, to focus on this. Um, some of the stuff I'll talk about in a little bit will explain why we don't have that bandwidth. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, with two things to circle back on there. You, mentioned, you started the CLAs, but I'm not sure you finished it. The, the main point there was, Previously, these were considered core modules, and they would have needed or had the CLAs at that point, right? Even then, can they no. Really? And so, so then they, now they, they definitely existed, don't so because they're, they're no longer core, they're so no longer community, they are separate. Daniel's timeline is, is really kind of important, and there's one piece that I don't think he had in his timeline because he probably didn't know, because um, not a lot of us actually knew the um, timeline. So around that time spot where those modules were removed was also the time that Evoke started offering indemnification as part of the licensing. Um, now, the CLA was there before. Like, I remember signing a CLA back in 2007, eight. Whenever I became a core team member back in like 2007, 2008, 2009, one of those, but it wasn't as enforced. Ooh, care, careful, Daniel. We're getting um, here. You know, it, it wasn't as enforced at Unless that, you're to do that. At, at that time. So, I, the, the before it wasn't as big of a deal for those modules because they were already treated separately. Um, it's always only been really for the main product, from what I can remember historically, anyway. And looking at the list of who signed, yeah. I don't think any of the, most of the original module developers weren't really there, were they, for the community ones? Um, I guess I'd have to go back and look at that list again. But yeah, I, I think it's just a transition difference. Um, it would not hurt anything gotcha. to get those agreements signed, but I don't but think not it's, needed. it's not anything that would block because... Yeah, it's that was my point. If we overdo it, we're going to lose uh, participation. Moment. It's going to be yeah. too and, and from my perspective, right, I've never asked for it for the documents module. I don't ask for it for any of my open source well, modules. It, well, it kind of goes back to the fact that it's not attached to the core and it's not, not distributed with, and it's not distributed with the score. With the exactly. core. It's not being sold. 
you're, you're it's not being sold, right? So not, removing yeah, it clears up the question going forward. Yep. There is nothing different between these modules and two sessions content or open yeah, yes. content or any Any, other anything other else. Yep. modules. Um, okay, so another thing to talk about was, uh, again, that purpose if, being for trying to get modules up, but that later, once they are up to to certain level, yes, further improvement and further additions and features and enhancements can continue. These are Many of these are our favorite modules that we've used for years and years and years because they did a simple job really well and we keep coming back to them. So the first purpose is get them pre uh, present and, and, and ready for upgrade levels. Then other things can be considered and the community discussions and the feedback and the help that Daniel is discussing needing will be even more important at that point. So. Um, getting it into an advisory group location where people can then communicate and see and find and participate, I think is, is vastly important. If um, you allow me a question uh, regarding the uh, developers uh, community group, are there regular meetings? Are they active? Should we make that the place where we discuss the community going to take this one. Or would it be better to be a, a smaller group just for that? But Nobody is probably the right place. Yeah, so, so Daniel, I would say that the developers group is the correct place for that. Uh, unfortunately, the developers group is not meeting um, pretty much at all. I would say there's a subgroup of the developers group, the documentation group, which meets on a weekly basis. The technology group, which Mitchell leads, uh, meets on a weekly basis. So. Um, and the awareness group meets on a monthly basis, and partners meet kind of as needed. Um, Mostly online. Well, no, it's all yeah, online. Yeah, it's all online. But so one of the things I think that would be that maybe the better differentiation is to your purpose point of the modules, right? The purpose of the groups, right? The awareness group is evangelizing DNN. If you want to really abstract that group down to the lowest level, and yeah. Will can you know Will can shoot me later. Um, <laughs> but it's evangelizing DNN, right? The yeah. developer group is a little bit misleading to a certain extent. Um, it's really around developer experience. Mm -hmm. so onboarding and preparing and on, developing. Onboarding, preparing for development and documentation is that group's focus. Tooling. Tooling like is that. support, right? So from your perspective and from the community modules perspective, that group is, is, is important and there's aspects to it that, that will benefit you, but maybe not as much as, as some of the other groups. Um, the partners group, obviously, that is around partner relations and, and, and mutual benefit, right? So benefit for DNN, benefit for the partners, benefit for those of us that are leveraging DNN. The technology group, we're really a huge group. Um, we're meeting weekly. And, and that group is really focused on the strategic direction. So fixing some of the things that you've been talking about with upgrade failures and pains yes, of yeah. upgrading and, and some other stuff that I'll talk about a, a little bit more, that's what that group is. And that's where, as this concept of community modules, really of the four groups, three of the four groups are actually important to you for different things and to this group for different things awareness for promoting getting the word out, getting the promotion out, letting people know that you are working on these modules. Where to find you them. You will make new enhancements. Here's where you find them. Here's how you support things. The developer group from should you be doing a different build process to stay consistent with what's being recommended for new developers. Getting right? more people involved with him on this. And Mitchell tell him he might be surprised that people in the awareness group will help you write a blog. And also, there is a ghostwriter that does amazing, <laughs> no, there's amazing. More than one. There's more than one. Well, there's one that I like to leverage that does great work. Um, <laughs> but, but there are people, right, that if, if you don't, right, and that's the thing, right, the dividing line here is the awareness group is to, to showcase the good. And if it comes to that point where the good, like, you tapped out on your community involvement with, doing the work, then get it to the awareness group and one of them will get it up there for you. You know, and, and one of the things that those that are doing the ghostwriting and the multiple people, it still comes out under your name. 
right? So yeah. they write the post, they let you review it, so then you can still be the communicator of that effort. So that's where these groups will really play into what you're doing, and, and, and I'll talk a lot more about the technology group here in a little bit because of all of the other crazy stuff we're yeah, doing. We're getting, we're getting close yeah. to it. Yeah, so awesome. I, I think the point is like, so, don't feel like you have to bear Basically, the, basically the question that I, that I wanted is, should I fire up my own meeting and start things, or do we need a more formal process of forming something? You probably talk underneath of the uh, tag and get it uh, set up as a subgroup so that you can get more people knowing about your meeting and coming to it. Jo join, join the larger groups and let the oh. larger groups know that you, uh, Clint, Let's get I think at. he's already in the he's already uh, developer. developer. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get you into the other group, but then basically just set, set up the meeting and let the folks know what's going on, so, okay. and, and we'll try to get your people to come. So I think what, there's enough passionate people and some of these, you, especially some of these. It sounds like Daniel, you might have started in the group that doesn't have a lot of activity in it, and so you're you're seeing you're hearing crickets or you're 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 not seeing a lot of <laughs> presence. And if you had just happened to start in a different spot. You would have had a different uh, and, impression. And, and really, the, the two major active groups are the awareness group and the technology group. Mm -hmm. The other groups are doing things, but they're not nearly as communicative. They're not paying as much different attention purpose. to slack their purpose and, yeah. and their mission's a little different. So to, to get to that, we're good. The only other thing, just while we're here, active forums was your other module on your list. Um, that module, um, I've done a fair bit. There's also one other community member, and I feel horrible at the moment because I cannot remember the name of the individual that has been plowing through. No, there's somebody very recent that has just been plowing through all of the issues out there. And I am drawing a blank at the name. I don't have my computer out right now. Um, but there is some effort there. What I think we need to do is get you and that person together to try to see what we can do to energize it and I think get it moved over to, to get it done. Um, there's, so, that module needs a lot of love. That's yeah. the biggest problem. I think uh, one, one thing we could do is potentially like go try to blog, you know, saying, hey, we're reviving these old modules. If you're interested, respond to this. We're going to have meetings and we'll set up a and meeting and then we promote it. I, I also think that when we do that blog, what would be good for you, Daniel, would be to say who is the um, who's the who's the biggest person that or the biggest modules that you need assistance with? I'm going to the tickets. Yep. Uh, Daniel, I, I'll get with you on the uh, promotions and blog and potential meetings set up. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. to get a small group working with. I do. Well, so um, we've kind of run through a, a series of things, and in, in here in the uh, around the table here, and um, and and with you, Daniel, we've we've pitched questions and ideas and answers. We've kind of talked in big circles. Um, Mitch has got one more item we're going to come to, but um, how about in the online group? Anybody posted chat items, or anybody who's online want to uh, chime in and ask questions or? So or far, voice opinions. So far, it's been mostly just like kudos. Yeah, absolutely. But not many questions. At least, yeah. Um, uh, Mitch, you had um, one more thing about uh, upgrade versus rewrite. Yeah. So the the because again, we didn't want to interrupt you with your perfectly timed slides. Um, but if you could go a couple slides back to your one where you kind of showed the upgrade path, um, I'm curious to see if, if you've oh. seen mm -hmm. or if others on, on the meetup have seen. So for the most part, I agree entirely with what you're seeing here. But we have an interesting scenario that's been really real for us. And, and that is those that just have decided, I want to stay with DNN, but my existing site got backed into such a crappy corner yeah. that I'm going to stand up a new 9.2 installation and just transfer. And I'm going to re-implement, yeah. not not transfer, yeah. but it's actually re-implement because they're they're going to keep the content and not even always keeping the content, right? And yeah, I it's an audit process available because yeah. well, what we're seeing is is we're seeing what what I see is of that 25 percent, right, that are are, are looking in, in your chart there. Um, for me, it's closer to 40 percent. 
that mm -hmm. are unable to upgrade right now. Wow. Um, uh, with 9.2, it's closer to 45 for customers that haven't worked with us. Our, our customers have a little bit better rate, but I won't go into that uh, quite yet. But what we see is we're seeing a lot of people that have a 6x or 7x site that's not responsive, that has old modules from some vendors that are no longer in the ecosystem and everything else. So their thought process is, you know what, I'm going to stand up a 9.2 installation. I'm going to completely re-implement my site because I want to be mobile responsive. So my menu structure doesn't make sense. My page content doesn't make sense. My yeah. imagery doesn't make sense. So we retain them as a DNN user or an Evoke user. Right, but it's a fresh restart. But it's a fresh restart. Right. Do, do you see that or do you see a true drop-off? I, I totally agree, and I'm actually surprised to hear your numbers because when I was designing the slide, I, I I didn't do scientific research on that. Okay, it's what what I see roughly. You know, so don't look at the percentages as valid scientific data. Uh, but I I thought maybe 25%. I'm exaggerating things, so yeah, I'm happy to see that it's even worse for some people. It, and, it, uh, it doesn't mean that's 25% of the people that we totally lose. Uh, it's people that we put in the mindset of looking at other stuff. But okay. I totally agree that it happens to me very often, exactly as I described it, to fire another site with the DNN 9.2 or, or you know, kind of redesign and stay with DNN. And, and do you see people, you know, the other scenario we see is we do see people that accept the risk. Not that I condone doing that, but do you see people that accept the risk that say, I'm on 742, I have backported some of these security fixes that I feel safe. Like, do you see that? Because I mean, we see people that love the platform, but yes. stay. I see that too, but it's usually thought of as a temporary solution until they can move forward. And it sometimes is temporary for a long time. <laughs> however, right. temporary uh, for Right. However, most of them, I have no problem bringing them all the way up to 804. Mm -hmm. uh, where it mostly breaks is either the missing UI features, page icons, and stuff like this in the, in the persona bar that blocks them from usability of a feature they need, or a module that breaks, and they mostly break uh, with uh, 9.2. It's mostly there that they break a lot. No, uh, Mitch, I, uh, I wanted to ask about your, your scenario there where you're saying, you know, some, some people will go, well, you know, because we can't upgrade, we're just going to set up a fresh new 9.2 install and we're going to manually move over the content that we're going to be setting up and basically, like you said, re-implement. You don't think that people faced with that, that suggestion as what we can do to get you up to the newest version go, well, if we have to rebuild it, why not use WordPress? <laughs> Uh, if I got to manually move on the gold content, and that's that's what Daniel was talking so, about. Was, if you know. force the question to make them consider it, yeah. then they're going to consider everything, and you don't really want that. Well, we, well we, let me tell you why you want. To do well, that. actually, yeah. so so we get that we get that question. <laughs> we do get that question a lot, and you know, sometimes you can use the features to counteract it. Sometimes yeah. you can use other things. What what I the the most successful thing is. An upgrade makes total sense in a lot of cases, but we encounter people that are on 3x and 4x today in sure. 2018. Yes, yeah, sure. And that content, I can upgrade them. Almost all of them, yeah. I can upgrade. The problem is, it's not responsive. It's not mobile friendly. They're going to want to rethink their website. So the argument that we use a lot of times if we do have to do a lift and replace is you already have to touch every page of content. So rather than touching every page of content in this old version, let's touch every page of content in the new version. Now, we have ways, which I'm sure, Daniel, you have your own ways. You know, we had one client that had 5,000 pages of content. I migrated that from one install to another with two button clicks and 30 hours worth of work. So it can be done to automate it. During or after the two clicks? All right, we got a question. Uh, before. That's legitimate. Okay. Coming from Smeltzer. He said, I didn't mean to stop you in the middle there. Uh, right? I did, because if we didn't, we'd never stop. <laughs> right now. So Mike is asking, what is the avenue to get changes or extensions, modules into the core? So like, 
<laughs> if he wanted to get shine to ship, who's who who should how how would one go about that? Can I can I hold on? I'm sorry, sir. Hold on. Can I? Great question. Can we have a whole separate meeting about that? Uh, that no, no, no. Actually, I can. Meeting right no, there. that's not. It's actually a very, very simple yeah. answer. Okay. But I want to defer that to after I talk about the technology group. Okay. Because I do actually already know the answer to that question in absolute. Not a way to keep Michael Brown so, for the end of the baby. While, while, Mitch is, while Mitch is preparing and we are swapping here, let, let me go ahead and do a couple things. Oh, David, can you make me presenter again? Uh, Daniel, we are going to swap. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Daniel, um, don't go anywhere. We're still having you as part of the conversation because we got lots of conversation ahead. But um, I'm here. as I transition, thank you for everything that you're doing. You know, thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your actions. Thank you for things that you're doing that needed to be done and no one else has stepped up in such a direct, active way. Um, so, seriously, much appreciated. Um, you've, you've done an amazing, an amazing job and if no one else thanks you, we need to absolutely overthink you. <laughs> well, um, you're welcome, and I want to thank uh, DNN as a whole to uh, make it possible to do so. Yeah, you know, that's, a, that's kind of a good wrap-up. This is something you committed to do because you chose you're going to do DNN as your main business, and many of us around the table have that same story in our own versions, where in 2010 we decided we were going to stop doing anything else in Joomla and WordPress and all kinds of other things, and we were just going to do DNN, and that's where we started. Um, I'm yeah, sure my, my presentation was originally one hour, and one of the slides was uh, developers will follow the customers. So if you push them towards quote unquote WordPress, and the, they 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 want to keep you as a developer, I'm gonna learn WordPress, and I I'm gonna follow the money, right? So I think it's important. There's a very tight link between the customers and the developers, and the knowledge of. Yeah, that's how we pay our rent. That's how we pay our mortgage. So we're gonna follow whoever wherever the, our customers go. Well, um, so thank you, Daniel. Um, as we as we transition to having Mitch uh, kind of take the microphone and, and talk, um, we did want to talk a little bit about uh, the things that happened at DNN Connect. Um, we will post things in our um, Southern Fried uh, website where uh, Clint's going to put up blog information. We're going to post the link to some of the things that came out of DNN Connect. Um, originally, if this meeting was shorter. Uh, we were going to have David spend some time talking about the things that happened at DNA Connect, showing some pictures and slides. Um, anecdotally, he showed me a picture of the Cliffs of Insanity, um, which he got to visit out there, and I'm super jealous. So we'll we'll talk about that when we're having drinks later. Um, but uh, links and things that we're going to post. Uh, we have the YouTube um, playlist uh, where, uh, at the moment, I'm showing you the keynotes by uh, Andy. Um, but uh, this playlist is a large batch of all of the videos that were recorded and presented. And one thing that we need to mention is that these hello, where'd the picture go? There we go. Um, that these were all professionally recorded and prepared, and that you have access to a large amount of this video content um, and material that was presented at DNA Connect. And so, if you weren't there and you missed that information. You're going to be hearing about it a lot. We're all going to be talking about it because every time we have a community event like this, it makes waves. It makes ripples that last. And uh, you need to watch these. If you weren't able to get out there, like I wasn't, um, then uh, I challenge you to take this next month and watch every single one of these videos uh, so that you're loaded up with them uh, by the time that we, uh, we hit our next user group meeting. <laughs> um, but uh, what we're switching to now is that... Um, Mitch Sellers is going to uh, spend some time. He uh, is going to talk to us about the road ahead, uh, what we have as a brand new day for the DNA community, and um, and what we have to look forward to. Uh, again, uh, announcements and, and things with Andy coming in, with ESW coming in a year ago, and, and making everyone excited and wondering what's next, and repeated renewal of community activity and excitement just continues on. And uh, here from uh, DNA Connect, there was a lot of buzz and information and uh, a lot of it centers around what's going on with the uh, technology advisory group. So let's, uh, let's pass it to Mitch and see what we got to hear about. Yeah, so, you know, I think there's, a, at this point in time, it, it's, it's a bit old news to a certain extent, 
um, that I've taken over the leadership role of the technology advisory group. Um, Sean Walker was originally the leader mm -hmm. of that group. Um, he is the one that was, uh, you know, originally mentioned by, by Andy when those groups are created. Um, due to, you know, time commitments and other things, um, Sean just didn't have enough time, et cetera. Um, we've got things worked out where I kind of took over um, that, that leadership role. And, you know, one of the big things that we heard, right, we heard it at DNN Summit, we heard it at, at DNN Connect, and then shortly after hearing it at DNN Connect, we were able, uh, were able to kind of hold the feet to the fire of um, being able to get things kind of squared away uh, as that pull request. Uh, pull request. That's, one, that's one of the good ones. Uh, <laughs> so what we were able to do at DNN Connect was take a promise, right, that was made at DNN Summit, which was ESW touting that they wanted a small corporation and a big community, that they wanted the community to lead. Right? So that promise was made in February. The problem was is that we didn't have a way to seize that opportunity. Right? And, and there's a number of reasons why it took some time for that to happen. We got to Ireland and the same presentation was given by ESW. Right? Andy gave the same general message. Right? Small, corp, big community. And, and the goal there, right, was to be able to really focus on letting the community be enabled, letting the community accomplish those goals. And so I sat down with Andy. I sat with Clint. Um, we. Sorry, guys. We. And <laughs> fine. We. We sat down with Andy and Ash and really kind of hashed out what does this mean? So we have this technology group. We've been meeting. We've been talking about things. We've been talking about .NET Core and new APIs and release processes. We've been talking about all of these things. But we've been talking, and we have no keys. We've been saying we're going to build a better house, but nobody gave us a key to get into the house. So it sure looks pretty, but I can't do anything. Right? Do we break the window and get in and do something? <laughs> right? Or do we come to an agreement on how we work together? And what we were able to do in a one hour meeting in Ireland was phenomenal. We came to an agreement around how the technology group is going to function in relation to ESW. How DNN platform is going to function in relation to a vote. Okay, and so what came out of that is we came to a mutual agreement. The community will drive the roadmap. The community will drive the release process. The community is going to drive the direction of the open source project. Now, what happens because of that? We now are required to create the release packages. We have to create the release notes. We have to create the releases. One of the things that I met with with the technology group as shortly after I took over was talking around expectations, dealing with the things that Daniel was talking about before that were causing problems. A 920 release that breaks 60% of the modules that exist, that's not nice, right? Everyone is used to semantic version. Right? We've been around semantic version, whether or not we've known it, for years. Right? Windows 7 broke a lot of stuff. Windows 8 broke a lot of stuff. Windows 8.1 didn't break as much. Windows 10 broke stuff. Right? Major, version, major version releases, there's an expectation that you may have something break. A minor revision, right? a 9.1, a 9.2. You don't expect that. You're going to get new features. You're going to get enhancements. Right. But your stuff that worked on 9.0 should sure as heck work on 9.1. It should be okay. big changes. In yes. Completely exactly. Okay. A 9.2.1 release should be fixing bugs. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. 
We should not be introducing new features. Mm -hmm. So right away, we set a process in place that that was how we are going to move forward. Now, that's going to change a lot of things as we see it, right? Our, our short-term roadmap that is, is still in flux a little bit, we're going to have a 921 release in the next couple of weeks. A release candidate will come on Monday. And that final release should be essentially three weeks from Monday um, where it's going to come out. We will most likely have a 922 release, again, fixing stuff. A 93 release will be coming that will bring new things. The other thing that we established is that the 92 release wasn't just unfair to site administrators, right? It was a release that broke everything. It also wasn't fair the way the release process worked to the module vendors. There are module, ve module vendors out there that have every intention of supporting every release, but the documentation around, hey, I'm removing a bunch of stuff. If you used it, your life sucks. Yeah, yeah. That question, Ben has got a question about version numbers. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, 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 go ahead. Are there any plans to maintain not only the latest um, version, but to push security issues into a 805 release or a 912 release. So I'm going to get there in a second. So cool. bear with me for like two minutes and we'll get there. So 92 shouldn't have happened. Okay, I, I, I don't Not have the way it problem. did. It I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any problem saying that. I would never have a problem saying that. I will also tell you that we will never do it again as long as I am here to at least agree. Mm -hmm. I'm sure okay. a lot of people agree. And what we're trying to get to, though, is a method <laughs> that we have release candidates that are going to give the vendors time to try. Right? Because the big thing with this dynamic shift is Evoke or DNN software or ESW, however you want to reference them, they are just like every other third-party vendor in the ecosystem. They are now a consumer of the platform. So when we release something, we need to give them a release candidate so that they can consume it, so they can get ready to do their thing. So what we've established is we're going to use semantic version, major, minor, revision, revision or patches. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Doing one night. All right. Sorry. Let me, so major, minor, revision. Okay? So the expectations are going to be real. The other thing is we all know that we want to get to .NET Core. Right? I've talked about .NET Core and DNN at DNN Summit, I've talked about it at DNN Connect, I've blogged about it, we have case studies about it with what I've done with customer websites. We have we, Andrew talking about ways to get us there and right. bits we, and pieces. We embrace .NET Core in my consulting company heavily, right? As a Microsoft MVP, I understand that it's the way forward, not just because, you know, that's what everybody else thinks we should do, but it really is the future. So we've got to get there. But to get there, there's going to be more growing pains. But those growing pains have to be calculated. So what that means is we're going to restructure APIs. We have bloated APIs. So for those of you that are, are non-developers, right, what it means is we have places in DNN where I kid you not, we have five, six, even seven ways to accomplish the same task. All of those ways are considered valid right now because over time it's increased. They were the oldest one and they just don't, you know, legacy. Well, not even, not even that. We actually have straight duplication. Yeah. From huh. okay. So sometimes it's one calls the other that calls the other. That's actually not as horrible. We actually have certain bits of code that are literally copied and pasted across the APIs. So the problem is the main reason why 9.2 hurt was we removed a bunch of APIs and nobody knew. And right, so somebody okay. this one instead of this version. So part of our, and I, I, we, we created a blog about this to talk about the pull requests and builds and uh, roadmaps. But what we did with this semantic versioning is also instituted a deprecation 
process. If we want to remove something from DNA, if we want to remove the API, we have a process in place. The process to do that now is whatever release we say this is going to be removed in the future. Two major versions well done, after I that, that will be removed. Remove now, in addition to that, the warning message that comes in will say, this method was deprecated in yep. version blank. So let's just say that we had something in 921 that we flagged as deprecated. That code, every time a developer builds their module, would give a warning in Visual Studio that says, this method was deprecated in 921. It would continue to say, it will be removed in 11.0, and it will continue with use this method instead. Mm -hmm. So a you don't have to go searching for documentation. You've got the information in the exactly. lead right there. Visual Studio will tell you this is how you work around it. Yeah. Now that means the major releases are going to suck. Okay. There's no. There's no reason to sugarcoat it. Because you're saving all of the major elements to the major releases, therefore there are going to be more of those affecting things grouped together in one place. Exactly. Right? So if you're using a module that that vendor is not as responsive, you're going to want to plan ahead. Now, to that point, we understand, right, that individuals can't always upgrade right away to big breaking changes. So to, to Daniel, to finally answer your question, the commitment that we have going forward is when we would release 11.0, which 11.0 is the first release as the community driving DNA, that we could remove APIs. There's no way we're removing APIs in version 10 because we have not, we would not be following the process that we put in place. But as starting with version 11, if when version 11 is released, we have a security fix that is included, best efforts will be taken to also release a paired 10x release mm -hmm. that takes that security fix into consideration. 10x ten, only, not 9x and 8x and 7x? Only 10x. One, One back. The goal being what's been done is done, and we can't continue all the way back. I, I don't want to debate it here. I'll, I'll join in the tag to debate it. But what about server version levels and .NET version levels to come up with a standard to say that a 7.x is the top level for this age of server, therefore we'll do one for this, but we might not do one for 8 because that could at least run 9. Some type of conditional. There's... A lot of because problems. Because hardware things that mean you can't move up. All There's a lot of problem trying to go back retroactive. Where I, what I would tell you is doing that from 9x forward, yeah, or sorry, hard. from 9.2 forward, is feasible. <laughs> I'm not saying we're going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to say it's feasible. Doing it in 8 or 7 or 6 is almost impossible. Right? Because the security fix may not apply, et cetera. The goal with the policy that we put in place right yep. now yep. is we don't want what's happening right now to happen. Yep. You are on 911. 920 has security fixes in it. You can't upgrade to 92 because you're using module vendor blank, right. and that module vendor does not support 92. That, that is the problem we're trying to stop. Okay, so if you are on nine, that was a nice one. Okay. Good job. <laughs> I'm not. I I still have my list of vendors that I won't use. I will never publish that list. <laughs> All you, of the vendors should be met, glad. If you've met Mitch once or multiple times at any community okay. event, people come to ask him about his list because he mentions it every yeah. once in a while. And uh, right. no, he has not published it. You know, I've not seen the list yet. Right. No, I I do not personal private list. The computer gurus is on the list. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there was that there was that one module. Oh, okay. Casual <laughs> stupid jobs. Oh, 
Oh, that still works. You don't use the don't use chunk it log. Don't use the chunk it log. <laughs> because somebody, <laughs> Oliver <laughs> Hine, decided, or no, it wasn't Oliver. Sorry. No, no, no. Peter Donker decided to change that table, and I didn't know In about it. In the two it. tables, yeah. Um, but, but still, the, the, the point is, the goal <laughs> is we are at a place now where the community can control things. We are wanting to establish a stable relationship going forward. What has been done is done. What was done in the past is unfortunately in the past. I cannot wave a magic wand and make 9-2 go away. Because if I could, I'm not going to lie, I would trash 9-2 today if I could. Skip one three. Because it really did create a rift in the community. Right? And what, what my time when it was, it was so an opportunity that to have one. That is in and the that's the problem, world. right? We yeah. need the fixes. Right? We need the bug fixes. We need prompt. We need, prompt. We need, yes. we need, prompt. We need yeah. the persona bar to actually work. We need the persona bar to we have need some edge management. We need right? That. We need all of those things. So the, the message here is suffer through 9-2, and the technology group is going to make it easier going forward. We have commitment. We have a lot of people there. Um, the conversations are not always productive. We're trying to get better about that. We're trying. We're, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. But we're getting there. There is a commitment from, a, from the community to do it. The changes that have happened in the last, let's see here, it is the 21st of June. I have left DNN Connect and got back to the U.S. on the 4th of June. So we're not even 20 days since then. In those 20 days, myself and four other, five other community members have permission and have been able to process pull requests. We can review them, we can approve them, we can merge them. Myself and I think one other person have permissions to deploy updated NuGet packages to NuGet.org. Andrew and Oliver have the SDS. Andrew and Oliver, Andrew uh, Hoffman yep. and uh, Oliver Hein have permission to Visual Studio Team Foundation Services to be able to set up automated builds so that we can do a build on every pull request, All right. so that we can do an automated package deployment. In those 20 days, as of last week, that we'll get to that in a second, because that's a really good one. Um, in those 20 days, we have we demoed a lot about the president the first yeah. 20 days. We, we, we have a, a release process where on Tuesday we were able to see a demo of that automated build generating the packages that would be released on GitHub. That is something that's been a manual process for the last however many years. Okay? We also have agreed to a mutual process where ESW contributions follow the same protocols okay. that DNN community members follow. All right. Meaning, yep. we the require numbering and the process. Not, not just that. Okay. Any pull request that comes in must be reviewed by two of the authorized approvers. Those include myself, Oliver Hine, Peter Donker, Vashen. Sent the okay. yeah. okay. um, Eric VB, Daniel Mettler, that's it. That's it. Um, as well as Tomas from ESW and Ash Prasad from ESW, but he isn't really reviewing requests, but he has the right to do so. Two of those individuals must review Anything. every pull request, regardless if it came in from the community or from ESW. And you cannot review your own pull request. That's what I was going to and say. You, they can't get there too and get around that. You cannot review your own pull request or merge. You also cannot merge your own pull request. And the first person I catch that merges their own pull request since we put the rules in place will lose their right. Period. End of story. No question. No debate. Yeah. Does not matter how small the change is. No flawless. Because we have to adhere as a community, as we're driving, <laughs> we've got to follow our process. If we put a process in place, we need to follow it. Because the goal here is the community wants a stable platform. We want something that we're building businesses on. 
We're building sites for our customers. We are building a website that's used by the organization that employs us. We do not want to have to come into work on Monday morning and be like, there's this major security issue, and now you've got to spend $25,000 because that module we used last week broke it. Right? Yeah. We need to stop that from happening so that we can continue to grow, as Daniel mentioned. Right? We need to invigorate and energize that community. And that's what the whole concept of this technology advisory group is. Right? The first goal was to create the process, to create the procedures, to take over the releases. Okay? ESW has been fantastic in working with us to get here. Okay? It took some time to open the communication channel, but they will be providing us QA resources to at minimum do a regression run of QA on every release, which is fantastic and greatly appreciated. That is part of the reason why the release candidate process for minor and revision releases, so something like a 9.2 or a 9.2.1, we're going to have a one week or a two week release candidate process. That's going to be where ESW does their stuff. That's where everybody else does, does yep. their things. For a major release, we will have a four week release candidate process. Does not matter how big or how small that major release is. Doesn't matter how big or how small that revision release is. The key here is consistency and planning. Mm -hmm. The last piece with the release process that was, that was documented here is we are also going to only release when we know that there is at least three business days from the day of release to the end of a business week with as much effort as we can to respect international holidays as well as U.S. holidays. I got a lot of flack with the first version of this blog talking about U.S. holidays. Those are the ones that we're most concerned about, right? Those are the most visible. <coughs> but we are looking at taking national holidays at an international level into consideration. So what does that really mean? What it means is a release will only happen on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Okay? What we don't want to have happen is we don't want to release something with a security hotfix on a Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Because either A, we ruin your weekend, right? We, re re we ruin your weekend, and you have to spend all weekend upgrading, or you risk not patching the security vulnerability. That is now announced and out there, and everyone knows about it. And then your site gets hacked and gets redirected to support ISIS, and all things go bad, right? So we don't want to do that, right? And the whole guiding principle, if we had to say, what is the one thing that the technology group is looking at? It's stewardship. We want to be good stewards of the project, right? Which means respecting the community contributions, which means respecting the release process. Mm -hmm. And with that, one of the things that's came up in a conversation has not been, um, this is literally a development from this afternoon. We will be revising our community contribution standards to talk about a, a minimum guaranteed response time on mm -hmm. pull requests. Okay. So that we make sure that you get feedback from the technology group, from those of us that can, uh, you know, approve pull requests in a timely fashion, right? Our goal is to merge things in. We want to make sure that we're merging things in that are good and complete. So if we get pull requests that don't aren't complete, for example, if you add a feature with support at the database level but don't give us a UI to turn it on, we're not going to accept that request. We're going to work with you to try to get that enhanced. But the goal is to not let stuff sit for months. Now, there's still history. There's still requests out there, right? That's the thing that sparked this conversation was a pull request that came in in January. Okay? We just got permission to do this stuff in the last 20 days. Yeah. So we need to go back through. We need to review those. We need to validate them. You got a question? Okay. Yes. What happens if you want to add a feature that involves both the DNN community uh, uh, main uh, project and the persona bar UI? Will that be two pull requests? Yes, yeah, Daniel, oh. Daniel, that was right in there Good with question. my questions, too. Uh, I was going <laughs> to ask about that, that gray line between evoke and community in that if you're in there to start making fixes and making updates, and we now have an ability to post updates, do they go into community? Do they eventually trickle up to so, evoke? And what about that's things? a different question. That's a different question. So yeah. to yeah. Daniel's question, okay. 
right, wrong, or indifferent. I, I, I don't want to start this religious debate because, gosh, <laughs> I started it a couple of times already. Um, you know, um, religious debates are ones that have possible differing opinions. Uh, when everyone agrees, it's not a religious debate. Oh, this, was a, this was a hotly really contested one. No, no, this was a religious <laughs> debate. <laughs> this, this, this was a religious debate. So, there has been a division in DNN platform and the persona bar in the separate repositories. Although, my personal opinion, I understand why it was done. I don't like it, but we're stuck with it. So what that means is, if you have a pull request, and that pull request adds a feature, which is a change to DNN platform, but then you need to expose a UI for it, which is a change to the persona bar project. It is two pull requests. Sadly, it is also two issues. Now, you can reference and link the two together, I don't like it. It's the way it is. I don't think I'm going to get it changed. But I am doing everything there. I can to prevent us from ever doing it again. And if you're passionate about this concept of one repository to represent DNN, please, please come help me with this argument. But because I totally agree. Separate but repos, right? It's the it's separate right. repos that are the problem. Isn't because the reason for that separation uh, in the hopes of someday have a headless DNN. No, well, it's actually, more no. Of a build process. <laughs> um, it was it was all build process. I okay. if it was a headless CMS goal, I could um, better support it personally. Yeah. Um, the concept or the theory that's been thrown around, the most winning argument is, well, it's less complex this way. Well, it's actually not, but it is what we're dealing with. Um, so our process isn't perfect. Um, the other thing is. Um, the role of the technology advisory group, right, is to help try to steer this direction. If you have a contribution and you don't know how to contribute, you don't know what repository or what documentation requirements are there, reach out to any of us on the technology advisory group, reach out to me, come to one of the technology advisory group meetings, send an email, send a smoke signal, submit an issue, get the question in. I don't really care how you communicate with us, we'll communicate back with you, if you have a passion to make a change, we'll get there. To your question, Ryan, about evoke versus platform. If a, up and trickle down. If evoke is broken, evoke is broken, and that's on ESW. If evoke is consuming something from DNN platform, fixing it in platform fix it, fixes it in evoke. But they have to separate account. But they, come and get they, in platform and pull it in. they are, right? Evoke is not to diminish what they are, mm -hmm. right? But Evoke is a suite of tools that install on top of DNN platforms. Special business, right? So good now, for they business. replace things, right? They, re they swap out things entirely. Mm -hmm. So it is important if you're an Evoke customer to differentiate, is this an Evoke feature that's not working correctly or is this a platform thing? Yeah. And that's where the technology advisory group can also help serve that role. Because there is not a public pull request process to make a change to Evoke, because Evoke is a closed source product. Mm -hmm. So that differentiation. But if you fix, for example, URL rewriting, URL rewriting is utilized by both. Mm -hmm. Both. So you're going to fix it for platform. You're going to fix it for Evoke when Evoke moves to that version. Like as in, in part of the process of them going up to the next, because that was going to be one of my questions early on is how can the community be working on the platform is, without that just diverging more and more and more, unless every time platform, uh, you know, the, the corp is going to be doing their, you know, catching to the next level, they come and look at what's been done to the, uh, to the platform first, integrate those things. You know, as, our, as little as they need to, depending so on the difference. So platform drive. Our, our hope, I mean, I kind of move the other direction. Right. So our, our hope is, we are driving the direction of DNA platform. Yeah. Our hope is that ESW will commit to releasing Evoke at the same release cycle that we are. Yeah. So we are communicating with ESW to mutually agree on the roadmap. We have a 921 agreed release with a code freeze that essentially comes in tomorrow, please don't rush. 
and submit new things. We're, we're really there already. Um, that release candidate will come out on Monday. That release then is going to come in a couple weeks after that. The next release, we're going to mutually agree. The goal is for ESW to release with us, to keep it locked up. Now, that is the goal. I do not control. The technology advisory group does not control what that release process is. But there is an understanding between Ash and, and the rest of the team at ESW that that's where we want to go. So I, I don't believe we're going to run into anything, but it is a situation that if we're made aware of anything, we will immediately communicate it to the community. The community blog is a great mechanism. We will also make sure that any breaking changes, upgrade risks, issues, etc., are documented in the release notes at the moment that a release is made. Period. That was the other thing that happened with 9.2. Right? 9.2 was released. It took about six to eight hours to get the full breaking change notice out there. I know that caused a lot of harm. We are actually drafting as of I believe last night, the release notes for 921 are already in draft form. The release in GitHub is even drafted, meaning that the documentation, the planning, the forethought is there well before the release, so that we hopefully miss less. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So in GitHub, <laughs> typically when you go and look at a release of any open source project, it'll tell you there's X number of commits since the release was actually made. Why does the DNM platform repo not show that? Did I stop you? That's a good question that I'm going to have to look show at. It, and I don't know why. I'm guessing it's a configuration thing. There's some really weird... And you're on the development branch, you know, so it's there, like, maybe that's so the reason why? One of the things that I think is interesting with the way that we're managing things, and, and there is a talk of restructuring, um, we're not following GetFlow or any of the regular branching strategies. We have this weird development branch and maybe that's it's actually the real branch, and then there's this, there's this main board, branch which is master, that like right? or the master yeah the master yeah. branch yeah don't touch that branch that, right. don't don't do it. So there is some talk about maybe that's why switching back. So that may be it. I'd have to look at it in, in more detail. I've always wondered that, but I yep. think it's probably that because the master branch has had no commits since the last release. That's probably because master branch has had no commits since like 2015. Did you want to say anything about the cache? Yes. So a couple other things that came out of the conversations with the SW. Those of you that were at DNN. Summit in February, were there for the panel discussion, hopefully, where I was on stage with Ash and Andy, and I had asked a question about getting us a caching provider that would allow us to work in the cloud for platform. We're getting it. It's going to be a little bit yet. I don't have an exact date, but we came to a mutual agreement. They're happy. We're happy. We'll get, we'll, we'll get it eventually. It's not coming in 921. I'm crossing my fingers that we can get it for a new route. There would be a new functionality right. for a 921. <laughs> exactly. It, there's, a massive there's, one, there's one exception to the new feature in 921. Um, those of you that maybe have noticed or maybe not, the module memory-based caching provider, yeah. mm -hmm. it disappeared in 92. Yes, it did. So if you've noticed that your performance sucks yep. in 9.2, there's a reason. Yep. If I find out what happened to that, <laughs> you the back in. I'm going to put it back. Because it was a, an accident but, that it got removed. So you I hope so. We don't know. We don't know. No one knows. No one knows why it was re removed. No one knows where it went. I've not been able to find it. It's, it's a problem. That is the only one. And, and the reason why I would justify that that could be added back in in the 921 is it should have never been removed. Um, and it, it's anyway. a fix of an accident. So it's a fix of an accident, and, and that's actually something that's going to be a really major manual change for people to fix in a 921 release or a 93. Um, but the good news is better cloud support is coming for platform. Okay? Evoke is still going to have a differentiating, different caching provider 
that's specific for them. The goal for the community, though, is that platform as a native thing should be able to work in a multi-server environment. And that's what we will get soon. Oh, excellent. So that was agreed upon with the FW that that shouldn't be a differentiating factor. They are going to be creating a provider that is more environment specific. So it's going to be more optimized than the one that we would, will get in the community. Um, it will be known as the simple um, cash and provider, cash and provider or the simple balance cash and provider. I don't think the name is basic, I think is what we came up with. Basic web request cash and provider, I think is what the name was. Don't hold me to the name. The concept is we're going to get a basic functionality so that we can work in a load balanced environment at level. Evoke will still have a differentiating, optimized, different caching provider so that those that are Evoke customers will have that difference. And interesting. The, the, the main thing for me, right, and the main reason for wanting to, to talk with this group today, right, and the reason why I didn't have any slides. The reason why I flew all the way out here. Well, the reason why I flew all the way out here is well, that's the difference. Well, actually, let's, we'll, I'll explain that after the recording's done. Because um, this is a business meeting. But the, the, the concept is, right, it, it does make sense to sit with and meet with the community, right? I, I've got, you know, ESW representatives and everybody else here. But the, the key thing with this concept here is we really need to get, we need to get the community to understand it's a new day. Right? What I love with what Daniel did is he gave the backstory on how we got to where we are. And there's been some not so good comparisons made that caused a lot of paranoia and a lot of emails that I didn't want to deal with in February. But the key is we have turned a corner. It is a new day for DNN. We have an incredible opportunity to reinvigorate the platform that we've all been able to gain success with. We've built businesses with this platform. We have learned more than what we probably care to admit that we've learned. We've also forgotten more than we care to admit. <laughs> um, I don't know a lot of you, I still find my own blog posts sometimes when I'm Googling things. <laughs> it's a problem. I do. It's yeah. horrible, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I, yeah. I thought I, oh, I did know that. Yeah. Oh, but the problem is, right, we, we are a new day, right? I Invigorated. I've been around this community for a long time. We have amazing new faces here. We also have amazing old faces. We have people that have been in the community for years that we haven't seen, that we haven't heard from, yeah. and they're back. That to me, I don't care what Google Trends says. I don't care what some random targeted Google search term lookup does. What gets me interested is we have these people coming back. We have new people with amazing talent that are dedicating a lot of time to this community. And that tells me we've got something that's worth investing the time in. And that's what the whole effort here is, right? It's a lot of commitment. Those of us that are on the advisory boards, right? David. Well, you work for ESW, so you don't count as much. But, um, you know, it's true that he's not getting paid for this. Yeah, he is. Oh, it's true of his work hours. Work hours. But, but talking about this, I don't know if, uh, if there's a lot of people in the same situation, but me, I'm a longtime DNN community member. I was very active until uh, the new technology stack came over, which I talked about, you know, the, the learning curve is steep yeah. and there's m much support and everything. So I've been inactive for some time because uh, whatever I was doing was getting ignored. I was not getting support, not getting help to you, you get did, to this you, level. You four, and you now I saw an open door to come back and that, that's, I, I don't and know if there's a lot of people there. And, and that's exactly there are a lot of people who've come back through the open door. And, and that's exactly hey, Mitch Labrador is back. Right? Well, no, I mean, cool, and, that's, no? and that's exactly what and that's exactly what this is about, right? I mean, I know that each week I'm spending three to ten hours a week volunteering towards these groups. I know David, you're probably close to the same, right? This is something that we all are believing in. We're investing, whether it's our time, whether it's 
the employees of our organizations, whatever it may be, or our nights or our weekends, or risking getting in trouble with our spouses, etc. We're here working to better this community. And that passion you can give that one to your spouse. Is, is what we need. Yeah. Well, that actually will go a long way. Um, but that is what we're here for. And what we want to make sure that everybody knows, right? If there's any one thing to one get from me, okay. we want your contributions. Whatever that contribution is. If you can contribute technology things, if you can fix code, if you can you know, add back in that feature that you really don't like having to go to the database to change speak because up. it's still there. Speak up about the feature that you're missing. Speak up, write the issue, fix it, or all of the above. Right? We will accept that contribution. Okay? We're not going to let your pull request sit out there for six months. We're not going to you know, do that. We're going to vet your pull request. We're going to vet your change. We're going to make sure that we don't compromise the integrity of the system. Right? Because that's just as bad as not accepting your pull request. But the key is get involved. If you don't have the technical knowledge, but you want to help with the awareness, get with the awareness group. Get with the other group to help them do better. If you're passionate about documentation, developer tooling, those kinds of things, not when they fix the product, get involved with the developer group. Be, this is our time, right? The next six months to probably two years gives us an opportunity to do something that may garner the attention of Microsoft, that may garner the attention of a lot of people. Because the reality is, is if we achieve the goal, that I, I know we will, of migrating and creating a pathway from old to new on .NET Core, we will have showcased a platform that will have evolved for over 20 years and across at least five major milestones in technology platforms, including a transition to cross-platform. Uh, that is unheard of. That's right, yeah. That's pretty awesome. I was forget about that part. Yeah, right? So, uh, you know, well, you so should, you should the Dynamic Core is cross platform. And if, if we, we get, get there, that, we're cross platform. If we get there, right, a DNN release on .NET Core that is cross platform theoretically could have been a I buy spy portal in one whatever, that was created in 2001? 2001. 2002. 2002. That could be upgraded into something cross -play. That is something that will garner pretty attention of a lot of people. So being part of this movement, right, the, the game, right, and what Andy was saying in the keynotes, right, is the reason why an open source community will get people is there is... There's got to be something for us in the end, right? Whether it's a joy of helping others, whether it is of being involved in a highly technical project, all of the above, whatever the case may be, okay. there's a benefit, right? Bettering your business, right? Fixing a bug in DNN platform helps my business. I'm sure it helps most of your business. Because you know what? That thing that's broken, you have to do custom training to be like, oh, yeah, yeah. When you want to use that setting, you have to go to SQL and do this and then clear the cache. That doesn't work out. <laughs> Fixing that clicking action on Persona Bar lowers my overall heart rate right. throughout the day. It adds years to my life expectancy. I mean, it literally also <laughs> adds hours to any given <laughs> thing you need to do across you, a bunch of different pages. You, you, you optimize, and right? This one keeps kicking you off of editing that one. You optimize one thing. Right? And, 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 and I look at... I, I look at this as like I look at developer tools that we purchase, right? Those of us that are developers, there's a tool called Resharper for Visual Studio that a lot of people use. I calculated one day that Resharper on a given day where I'm heads down coding probably saves me around 25,000 keystrokes. Just think about it. On a day? On a day. Yeah, I actually did math one day. Um, it does a lot of crazy things. Um, That's impressive. The key there is... A lot of keystrokes. You're effective. Uh, auto formatting this stuff. Yeah, 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 a lot of keystrokes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the key is, Form. if you do a change to the persona bar that optimizes your page management experience, and that saves you 
three minutes a day, three minutes an hour, right? That adds up and it's a benefit to you, it's a benefit to your customers, it's a benefit to the community. And that's what this is all about, is making this product better for the community, as a community, with community direction. And that's where we're at, right? So there's been a lot of talk about us going full circle to where we were and the ups and the downs. Our history is our history. Where we've gone, I can't argue against. The bumps that we've hit in the road in the past I can't make those go away. But what I can tell you is the community as a whole, these groups, these advisory groups, the people behind them, want to remove those hurdles going forward. Yeah, so if you keep getting motivation a lot, and put you're going to walk your way into a keynote. <laughs> I'm you know, supposed to make it a great you, you know he, <laughs> That's totally fine, just no red hat. That's what's going to be doing a keynote. But no, but I mean, but, but, this is, but this is exactly what it's about. <laughs> Right? I mean, but that, that is what this is about. And, and it should be, though. It should be motivating. It should be energizing. Yeah. And, and we're seeing those effects. We have Mitch Labrador. We have other individuals, right, that have been around for a really long time and then disappeared for a really long time. They're all of a sudden like, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? Leverage it, embrace it. That tells me that we're doing something right. Some of us have just stuck it out because we're stupid. <laughs> okay? There's no other reason, right? Well, Why are we still here? Good. Well, we didn't have another choice, right? For me, those years, right, just like Daniel mentioned, right? Daniel was here all along. He just wasn't as active. But he still had his customers to maintain. He still had his business to run. So he was still here because he needed to be here. The difference is now he's here because he wants to be here because he can make a difference. And that is where we are. And you know what? It is motivation. That is a new, dawn of a new day is, is a good title for that. Very good. It really is. Mitch, we, uh, we're running across here our 8.30 mark, so that's kind of our line in the sand to say that we need to start wrapping up this, uh, this session of the Southern Fried DNN user group uh, because primarily we've got to get out of here and uh, get down the road to eat and, uh, and the bar before they start closing. So... Um, uh, thank you, everybody online, for joining us. Thank you, everybody who's watching us on the replay later on online. Uh, you're part of the community, and you're making things happen. And, uh, you know, participating in meetings like this is part of it. And just like Mitch says, getting involved and speaking up and pitching in wherever you feel inclined is going to make a big difference. And that's part of our uh, new day that we have ahead here for, for everything DNN related. Uh, thanks again to Mitch and Daniel for presenting and spending so much time here with us today. Thank you to everybody online. You're welcome. The meeting was awesome. Uh, we will have everyone back on again, as, uh, as we often do. Our next uh, user group meeting is July the 19th. That is the third Thursday, as it always is, third Thursday of the month, July the 19th. Uh, we will make announcements on who we have for speakers and our topics uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but uh, again, thank you for everybody who joined us, and uh, let the continue, uh, let's continue those conversations in our advisory groups and the places where you can pitch in and make a difference. Good night, everybody. <laughs>